Hey everyone, uh, Lauren here from Lauren Leslie Studio. It's a beautiful day in Atlanta, and um, just thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, I want to say before we get started, uh, when I created this event, um, it's my first webinar, and um, I was I saw that someone registered, and I was so excited, and I looked at who it was, and it was my mom. <laughs> so thanks, mom. Um, let's wait just a few more minutes to see if. Um, Anyone else is still uh, signing up and uh, getting ready to join? So we'll give it just one more minute. We've only got four people out of the group so far. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So this presentation is talking about seven steps to brand your online business or blog. So do you have an idea for a creative side hustle but aren't really sure where to start? Well, you're in the right place. I've been doing this since 2011 and would love to just share a few tips and knowledge with you. So today's agenda is we're gonna be talking about uh, several steps on how to make this happen, uh, talking about your research and homework, how to create a logo, how to get professional photography, choosing the right fonts, picking out a color palette, and selecting your patterns. So the first question is, um, have you always been an artist, or how did you know you wanted to be an artist? And the answer is just, I was kind of born that way. <laughs> The answer is yes, I've been an artist since always. This is a photo of me as a little girl, circa 1980 something, just ferociously coloring in my coloring book while my sister is patiently waiting like, um, when are you gonna play with me? And I have to say not much has changed since then. This is basically me um, late at night after work, you know, getting busy with my projects. So in school, I was actually a studio art major. Um, I concentrated in oil painting and got my BFA. And then I landed my first big girl job as a t-shirt designer. So you can see um, here, I'm at Genealogy, which is in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And I was able to combine a lot of my hand drawing skills um, to create some cool designs for t-shirts, as you can see on the right there. But that wasn't really doing it for me. I, it was a great first job. I was there for four years, but I was kind of ready for the next step. So when you know that you're ready um, to move on, you just have to say bye. <laughs> Atlanta, here I come. South Carolina, I'll always love you. You can see on the left, that's my home tea. Um, it'll always have a special place in my heart. But at the end of the day, we spend the majority of our lives at work, and you just kind of have to say, F everything that doesn't make you happy. How about no? Um, so that's just a little motivation to pursue, pursue what's really calling you. So I landed my second job as a textile designer. Um, that's when I moved to Atlanta, and I've been there ever since. And even to this day, I am still a rug designer. Um, I work for a rug company and also design pillows. So these are just a few pictures of that. And it's been super rewarding because my designs have ended up in anthropology, um, as you'll see on the bottom there. And also one of my rugs was on West Elm's Instagram uh, that had over 20,000 likes. So that's like one of the most rewarding things in a designer's um, career is to see that people really love your work and um, that it's selling. <laughs> But I do want to say I've always had a side hustle. Like I said, and I started um, an Etsy shop in 2011. And since then, I've just been um, freelancing and getting my side hustle on, trying a few different projects. Um, and in this year, I really kicked it into gear when I 
decided to create um, a really focused brand for my design business. So you can see um, on the left, this is kind of a visual checklist of all the things that you need for your brand. So you're gonna want a full logo, you're gonna want a professional photo, actually probably several, but at least one. Um, you're gonna want some kind of icon or like round logo, a few design elements, a signature, some key patterns that really stand out for your brand, um, a few fonts that you're gonna use over and over again, and a limited color palette. So let's get into the content. Seven steps to brand your online business or blog. So step one, you're gonna wanna do your research and your homework. I would recommend just doing a total brain dump. Pull up a Word document, grab your journal, grab a piece of paper, and just kind of write out all the things any kind of descriptive words, any adjectives that you feel like really just like revolves around what you're trying to achieve, the people that you're trying to attract and, and who you feel like you are as a person and as a business. So you plus your audience equals a beautiful marriage, if you will. I hear um, podcasters and people giving advice that, you know, you really shouldn't brand yourself until you have a following and then your audience will tell you what they want. And while that's somewhat true and that you definitely wanna to listen to your audience and do everything you can to serve them, you also don't wanna to totally go off course and go down a path that you might not enjoy five years down the road. So you wanna keep that balance between something, basically bet between being true to yourself and also serving uh, the needs of your audience. So I would recommend when you're starting your brand is just stay flexible. When I started my Etsy shop back in 2011, I was doing a lot of invitations and greeting cards. And I wanted to name my shop something like Lauren Pool Invitations. Well, I'm really glad I didn't do that because my offerings changed and I kind of got away from doing invitations and started doing more illustrations and character logos. And that would have been really confusing for my audience if my name was still Lauren Pool Invitations um, and I would have had to totally change my name. Whereas Lauren Leslie Studio is a lot more flexible. It definitely has a nod to a creative offering, but um, you're not sure quite what that is. It could be photography, it could be um, branding, it could be really anything. So I would definitely keep that in mind when you are uh, naming your business. And um, I would start with a Pinterest board and just start collecting things that really inspire you and that really identify your style and identify your ideal audience. So some examples of your ideal audience would be, you know, something really specific, like German teachers on YouTube. It's better to have a niche because you're, if you don't have, if you don't stick your flag in the sand somewhere, then you, you really can't be everything to everyone. So you really need to stick your flag in the sand and at least have that as your brand. That doesn't mean that you don't serve whoever is um you know coming to you and wanting to be a client you can still serve everyone but just in terms of your brand you want to really have a specific niche so that can also be like vintage retail shop owners uh, urban female writers in their early 20s boho photographers for yoga studios uh, minimalist interior designers with a modern style so those are just some quick and dirty examples so think Dollar Shave Club. This is one of my like favorite examples of a really amazing brand um, because this guy is just completely hilarious. He's totally like shaking up the razor industry. Like who would have thought that? And um, his brand is just very specific. Like he's all about being hilarious. He kind of has this bro sense of humor, but women still buy his products. He's just not building his brand around that. So it's not like, you know, he'll sell razors to anyone, but the brand and the message is um, very specific. So when you're thinking about your ideal audience, you wanna kind of jot down some questions. Where do they shop? What type of environment do they live in? How do they express themselves? Where do they hang out? And I would recommend creating a vision board for your ideal audience. This just really helps you get specific and um, helps manifest the, um, ideal audience that you're going after. So these are just some examples of an ideal audience. 
Um, someone who likes stripes, lattice, transitional patterns, black and white, classic colors. Uh, this audience is classy and safe, but still stylish. Another example would be like country chic. Think Joanna Gaines, rustic, natural materials, jute, burlap, hides. This is kind of a farmhouse fresh style. And if this was your ideal audience, then you could, you know, put like a burlap textured background on your website, something like that, something that would really be attractive to this customer. Romantic is sophisticated yet feminine, very grown up, maintains that softness and transitional style. Vintage is someone who's nostalgic, maybe likes to shop at the vintage retail stores that we talked about early, earlier, maybe restores old furniture and loves antiquing. And it's kind of a cool grandma look. <laughs> uh, Urban is another one. This is a city dweller. They're stylish and a little bit edgy. They maybe live in like a loft style apartment. They're slightly hipster and artsy. Bohemian has a, an eclectic style. I would say that they're more maximalist. Uh, they love fringe and tassels and uh, they're kind of a global nomad or, you know, love to travel. Um, and they have a natural and worldly style. Mid-century uh, is modern with a nod to nostalgia. I would say this is a very casual look. The shopper shops at somewhere like West Elm and is stylish, but also comfortable and relaxed. Scandinavian would be another example of just a really beautiful modern and minimalist style. Again, this would be great for like the uh, minimalist interior designer that kind of has a modern edge. So like, if that was your target audience, then your brand could be built around this type of look. So step two, you're gonna wanna create a logo. Now this can always change later on. Like I said in the beginning, you wanna be flexible with your brand, but you still need something to put um, in your profile pictures, on your website, on your letterheads, um, all of those things. So you're gonna need a logo um, to start with. And again, when we talk about naming your business, you want to stay flexible. Um, and I would say one of the two most important things um, are that your business name is <laughs> like people can pronounce it and people can remember it. Um, I've had friends start businesses that, you know, had really cool products. But um, I, as their friend, I can't even remember how to pronounce the name. And if I can't even talk about it like I don't and that's my friend then I don't really know how customers are going to be able to remember it even if there's a really cool meaning behind it even if it's a beautiful word just keep it simple and easy for your customers um, so I would say again to like kind of stay broad with that um, hit that you're offering create your client profile or your vision board and um, you are going to want a vector icon or like a round logo kind of like I have at the bottom of the screen here now, I already have a ton of clip art pre-made that if anyone is interested, they can buy it on my website for only $2.99. This is an awesome way to get started. I'm basically giving this these designs away for free because it's so cheap. Um, and you have all these pre-made options. You have 32 girls um, and you have, if you go to my site, you can see um, all the different categories. There's like, you know, a mom, a nurse, a realtor, um, a public speaker, a teacher, a writer, a yoga teacher. So if you're just getting started in your business, you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars hiring a designer, you know, it, you know, trying to relay your vision, but it's not quite what you wanted. You know, you can start with something really simple like this for next to no money. <laughs> However, if you do want something custom, I also do that for you guys. Um, the cost is $150 for a custom character logo. So I just want to throw that out there in case anyone is interested in that. So step three is you want to hire a professional photographer. Uh, I remember when Instagram came out and it was like the most amazing thing because all of a sudden your camera phone pictures, you know, no one really posted them before that. Um, the cameras weren't great. The pictures were kind of low res, blurry, whatever. The lighting wasn't quite right. But the Instagram filters were amazing. Um, and people have just really upped their game in the past several years where 
you're really only seeing like really professional grade photos coming on Instagram into their marketing and Instagram filters may be icing on the cake, but they are just not enough anymore. And smartphones just ain't there yet. <laughs> I mean, some of the cameras are pretty good, but people can tell when you're using your smartphone. You definitely don't want to use that for um, your brand photography. It, it might be okay like here or there, but um, you know, you want to definitely get a professional photographer in there. And even if you're shy about like showing your face or um, you know, you don't you feel like you're bragging or you don't want to like post a bunch of stuff about yourself. At the end of the day, like your audience wants you. So it's just important to have a few photographs of yourself where people feel like they can connect to you and relate to you. Um, and if you are on a budget, just as a quick hint, you can try to work with a student photographer or someone who's just getting started. Um, and they might even do it for free if they're trying to build their portfolio or next to nothing. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing that and just taking a Saturday and going doing a little photo shoot for an hour. So here are some examples of <laughs> uh, smartphone photography versus a professional photographer. Now, my boyfriend was really sweet to take some pictures of with my smartphone, as you can see on the very first picture on the left. But this picture is just not good. Like my leg looks like a ghost. The lighting is all wrong. I look orange. Like it's just not. It's just not cutting it. <laughs> and when I hired a professional photographer uh, for this yoga mat that I designed, by the way, um, as a side note, you can just see how much better the uh, photographs turned out. So you definitely want to do that. Step four, we're going to talk about choosing your fonts. The messaging are a huge part of your brand, but I'm just um, giving the design perspective uh, on this webinar. So I'm not going to go all into that. I'm just going to talk about the fonts that you're going to be using for your messaging and your copywriting. Okay, so the first thing you learn in Graphic Design 101 is all about fonts. You learn the difference between serif and sans serif. Serif basically has the bookends on the letters, whereas sans means without. So that's more of a clean font like you're seeing here on the right. Um, and fonts are just everything. Like they, they really... Um, convey your brand, your, your um, visually, I mean, they're just very important. <laughs> so you definitely, though, when you're choosing your fonts, you don't want to get, quote unquote, too creative with your uh, copy fonts, because you want your copy to be super legible. Um, and that's just really the most important thing when it comes to um, picking a font for your copy. And you're going to want to have at least one print font and one script font. And you may even go with like two of each, but definitely at least one print font and one script font. Um, and you're gonna use these over and over again for your title, your navigation, your header. Um, your signature is great for a script font. Um, your titles are probably gonna be like a bold print font, so that's um, definitely something that you wanna look into. And you wanna keep it to two to three fonts max, maybe four if you can get away with it. Um, but I would try to really limit yourself because you wanna be recognizable um, in your in your messaging and if you're looking for fonts guys like you can't just use the fonts that came on your computer uh, the default fonts on your machine are like not good so you're going to want to go to either defont.com or creative market um, defont.com you can download fonts totally for free um, but you're going to want to look and see if they're just for personal use or if they allow it for business use but they're all free um, and they have some really great things on there Creative Market, you do have to pay a small fee, but um, this helps support the designer. And I would say it's just a little bit of a grade above um, defont.com. So step five, you're gonna wanna establish a color palette. <laughs> now, if you're like me, you may be thinking, why do I love all the colors? <laughs> I love color, I'm a color person, and it is definitely hard to narrow down. But again, you wanna be recognizable online and really um, stick to that, uh, those branding colors that help, help people recognize you from a mile away. So I would really narrow it down to two to three main colors. As you can see in this presentation, my main color is this light pink, but you can also have a few supporting colors, but you just wanna keep it narrow and concise. Um, and again, when you're trying to figure out which colors you wanna use, you can create a Pinterest board and start collecting um, a lot of different inspirations. 
I would look at designseeds.com. And also, um, there's a really awesome blog called Love Print Studio slash Color Crush. And it's a, U a designer in the UK who just has amazing color palettes. So definitely check her out. Um, and as you can see, this is kind of how I did it. Um, on the left, this is my Pinterest board, which you can create sections for different ideas. As you can see, the first one is like blush pink and forest green. Uh, the next one are all the yellows I love. <laughs> and um, I found like this cute way to display it with um, these watercolor brush strokes. Um, so this is my color palette. I would say, you know, once you're finished with all of your brand, especially your color palette and your fonts, I would hang it on the wall just to remind you to um, stay within those parameters. Now, step six is select your patterns. So when you're selecting your patterns, this kind of goes back to identifying your style when you made those um, vision boards for your ideal audience and also for yourself. Like this is, you know, who you are, who they are coming together in a beautiful um, partnership. So, you know, when you're identifying your style, you want to think like, oh, is it whimsy? Am I preppy? Is my brand going to be more nautical, boho? Is it sophisticated? Is it more rustic? Um, so you want to go through those steps. And um, the patterns that you choose that fit into this style are going to be awesome to use as a backdrop, um, as a letterhead on your website. And you can even create digital products with them, which I'll get into in just a second. Um, and Pattern Bank is a great website that you can go to to find awesome patterns, or you can request a custom pattern with a designer. So you can see here on the left um, on laurenlesley.com slash calendars, I made tons of calendars with my patterns that I had selected. Um, they're different colorways. And um, again, this is like 2018 printable calendars. It's just a PDF file. So when people want to buy this from me, they can just download it over and over again. The work is already done, which is awesome for passive income. Now, it was a lot of work to get this ready. Um, I will say that. So it's not like passive income is zero work, but you're not trading dollars for hours, which is a great thing, in my opinion. <laughs> and step seven is to keep it consistent. Um, focus is really key. And with so many online businesses, it's hard to stand out in any market, really, but especially online. And having a consistent brand just makes your business immediately recognizable, whether they're seeing you on Facebook or on Instagram or on Pinterest, or if they just stumble across a blog post, um, they definitely want to be able to recognize you right away. Now, if you see the green button at the bottom of this screen, you can download my free um, Photoshop template. Um, I'm giving it away totally for free. And um, this is the same template that I used in the beginning when we were looking at um, my brand, which is basically a visible, uh, visual checklist for you to use. I also wanted to let you know about this free five-day email course that I have coming up. It's called Photoshop for Dumbo Heads. And this is a course for um, total beginners, people that have never used Photoshop before. So if you've dabbled around with it and you know the basics, this is not for you. Um, this is someone for someone who may be a little bit intimidated. Maybe they're not a designer or they've never, um, you know, they just want someone to guide them through the first initial steps. So this is, again, a free five-day email course that you can find at laurenlesley.com slash Photoshop five-day course. And it comes with videos, uh, video tutorials each day. Um, I'm still working on the very fifth video, so you can still go ahead and sign up. But um, it's coming soon because I'm still working on the very last video, but it should be ready this week. Um, and if you have any interest in collaborating, then um, I am looking for co-hosts for future webinars and also for guest blog posts, if you think that's something that um, our, audi our audience would uh, be in alignment. So if you would like to co-host a webinar with me, uh, go to learnlesley.com slash co-host dash webinar. Or if you don't want to be on video yet, but you, know, um, you still are looking to grow your email list, you can do a guest blog post um, at laurenlesley.com slash guest dash blog dash post and fill out the application there. Some topics that I'm looking for are about online brand identity, color and marketing or color psychology, 
design trends for 2018, home decor tips. Um, this would be, you know, I'm mainly looking for interior designers or folks in the home decor industry. Um, this would also include uh, how to be successful on Etsy or creative market. Uh, passive income with a more design focus. You don't have to be a designer, but, you know, something that is a little bit related to design. Um, tips for surface designers or marketing strategy online, which includes email list growth, webinars, social media, SEO, that kind of thing. Okay, so now we're at the Q&A session. Does anyone have any questions for me? If you do, go ahead and write those into the chat box. Anybody question? <laughs> no? Everything pretty clear? Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And um, I will see you next time. I'm going to be working on a webinar series. So I'm ideally looking to have a webinar every Sunday. If that's too much, because I am still working my full-time job, it might be every other Sunday. But I will definitely keep you posted. See you next time. Bye.